Yes, the title of this video is a bit hyperbolic, but the price of RAM has gotten to the point now where I think it's time we talk about what's going on, what we know about timelines, and the ramifications and fallout for the home lab and infrastructure as a whole. Let's get to it. Hey there, home lovers, self posters, IT pros, and engineers. Rich here. If you've been living under a rock and haven't seen the price of DDR RAM recently, then this video will come as a surprise. But we've yet again entered into unprecedented territory on computer components, this time with DDR5 RAM reaching astronomical prices. How bad has it gotten? In early November, Tom's Hardware posted an article reporting that DRAM prices had skyrocketed to 171% year over year. And Reuters reported in late October that DRAM prices per bit had increased by an even further 187%, essentially doubling the price of DDR5 memory to over twice its cost from July 2025. So the best time to have built a brand new computer was actually June of 2025. After that point, buckle up because you're gonna be paying more, potentially a lot more. But more than just building a PC, this upward trend has a massive effect on practically all technology, from PCs to game consoles, to smartphones, to home labs, and the enterprise. But before we move further, let's talk about why this is happening. Again, in case you've been living under a rock. And to no one's surprise, it's AI. According to a recent report, memory chip prices surged because of a global rush to produce AI chips, tightening the supply of standard DRAM that goes into PCs and consumer electronics as makers prioritize memory for AI data centers. And because we live in a late stage capitalist society, many manufacturers are now prioritizing profitability and capacity over volume, i.e. they don't want to overproduce DRAM because oversupply in the past led to deep price collapses. To that end, we're also seeing dramatic changes happening in the memory manufacturing space. For example, Micron, a leading DRAM manufacturer, officially decided to exit the consumer memory market just last week. Why? Well, because they want to sell all of their DRAM to AI companies. First friends, they came for our GPUs, then they came for all of our power, and now they've come for our RAM. These price increases are beginning to have a major downstream impact on more than just the home PC building and gaming console market. They're affecting the secondary market for older memory as well, dramatically increasing the used DDR4 memory pricing, which hits us hard in the home lab. For example, the higher DDR5 costs are being felt all the way down the hardware lifecycle. A single stick of 32GB DDR4 ECC RAM is now going for around $210 a stick. Compare that to my last DDR4 memory order, where two 32GB DDR4 ECC memory modules came in at a grand total of around $68 delivered to my door. That's a 517% increase in a year. Now you can see why I'm saying RAM just might be the new Bitcoin, a 517% increase in a year. That is bananas. And I'm not cherry picking these prices either. Go to eBay and search around. If you find better deals, share them on our Discord so other home members might be able to benefit. Now, I've got some really bad news. This isn't going away anytime soon. Numerous news and investment outlets are providing some dire timelines for when this shortage might come to an end, with this article stating, quote, as a result of this structural shift, UBS predicts that the supply shortage of DDR memory will last at least until the fourth quarter of 2026, while the supply shortage of NAND flash memory will continue until the third quarter of 2026. In short, this isn't going away anytime soon. Professionally, I'm hearing that most server manufacturers expect this to last at least 13 to 18 months, depending on how the market goes. The situation is so unstable that hardware vendors have started cutting quote lifetimes to just 30 days due to extreme volatility in RAM pricing and ongoing supply chain shortages. If you work in IT and infrastructure, you know how hard it is to get an expensive purchase through a company quickly. On a 30-day timeline, you have to be on it or your budget is going to get blown. Also, if you're holding out on purchasing until later next year, you need to seriously consider moving those timelines forward as quickly as possible. These prices aren't going to get any lower and every day spent holding off is going to cost you money. I'm also hearing from major hardware vendors that they anticipate the cost of NVMe storage will increase in the coming year as well. I don't personally have any evidence for this happening as of yet, only the rumblings of salespeople, which I take very seriously. So if you're thinking of buying or upgrading your M.2 NVMe storage in your system, you might want to consider doing that sooner rather than later. If I'm wrong, hey, you bought it early. If I'm right, I saved you some money. So what can you do in the meantime? All of us are going to have to do more with less until sanity returns to the commodity hardware market. If for some reason you have spare DDR5 or DDR4 RAM laying around that you're not going to use, sell it. 
For us home labbers, it's going to be a time of changing our infrastructure approaches. Consider moving fat VMs to LXC containers to cut down on wasted RAM usage for kernels when you can. And for LXC containers, consider moving them to Docker or Podman containers to cut down on memory waste even further. Every little bit can help when you're RAM constrained and you still want to spin up applications. If you're new to home labbing or you're trying to grow your lab, find a local free geek or other discount secondary market store that has retired enterprise desktops or mini PCs at affordable prices. And if you're selling, try really hard not to be a dick and gouge people because you can. Remember, all of us home labbers are in this together and as a community, we can each help each other out if we want to. I am also personally thinking about how we as home labbers can communally pool resources to create shared home lab infrastructure either through private cloud approaches or some other way. Stay tuned for that in the future. And lastly, this too will pass. Eventually, GPU availability did recover, and eventually RAM will come down when the market saturates. Till then, we're just gonna have to do more with less. And if you're looking for ideas on how to do that, join our Discord community. Have you ever heard of Kubernetes? And that, friends, is going to do it for this video. If you found it helpful and you want more IT Pro and Home Lab goodness, consider subscribing. And if you have opinions, let me know in the comments below, and we'll catch you on the next video. Thanks for watching.